by the end of the trip, I had gotten very good at counting to 16. Perhaps you've been on those tours where along the way the tour guide constantly stops and gets up on her tiptoes to count the heads to make sure no one was left behind after the last bathroom break. Well, I had taken a group of young people to Pache, Hungary, on a mission trip working with Glenn and Klista Atkins, who were CBF field personnel, and there were 16 of us. So every time we stopped at an airport terminal or boarded a bus or walked down the street to lunch, I was constantly counting to 16. And it got rather complicated because the youth never stood still. It was like watching those cups in that shell game, trying to figure out which one had the ball underneath it. And admittedly, a theology of counting is fraught with problems. That oftentimes the church has been so consumed with counting nickels or noses that it has ignored larger, more important concerns. But there is a theology of counting that is rooted in the ways of Jesus. That it looks for the goodness of others. It never limits the grace of God. And it recognizes that everybody counts. It's not the only counting that we find in Scripture. Like in that story about Mary and Joseph where they leave going to Bethlehem because there's this census where Rome is counting all the people and calculating future taxes. But that's not the kind of counting that we see over and over again throughout the life of Jesus, that we simply find that everybody counts. It's like the parable that Jesus tells about the Son of Man coming on the day of judgment, separating everyone into sheep and goats, where on one side there are the sheep, because when Jesus was hungry, they gave him food to eat. And when he was thirsty, they gave him water to drink. When he did not have clothes, they gave him something to wear. When he was the stranger, they welcomed him. When he was sick, they cared for him. And when he was in prison, they visited him. But the sheep, scratching their heads, asked, when did we do these things? And Jesus said, whenever you did these things for the least of these, you did them for me. That it is a different way of counting where everybody counts. The prophet Ezekiel was quite frustrated because the leaders of the people of God were counting in ways that were troublesome. That these leaders were supposed to care for the least, the lost, and the left behind, but instead they were consumed with things that benefited them. And that these leaders, the people of God, were referred to as shepherds. They were supposed to tend to the sheep, take care of their needs, but they failed to do so. So finally, God steps in and says, I myself 
will search for my sheep. I will seek them out. I will rescue them from all the places that they have been scattered. That it sounds like all those parables that Jesus told about the shepherd leaving the 99 sheep to find the one that was lost. Or the woman who stayed up all night turning the house inside out, finding the one coin that was missing. That God said, I will seek the lost. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak. I will be their shepherd. That it is a different way of counting. And it is a picture of Christ, not only as a shepherd, but also as a king. That throughout history, the church has proclaimed Jesus is Lord, which is just another way of saying Christ is king. And when the early church proclaimed Jesus is Lord, it was a subversive act. Because Rome controlled the people of God. So anytime the church said Jesus is Lord, it meant Caesar was not. And when they proclaimed Jesus as the Messiah, the next king of Israel, it's why Rome was so quick to quiet that rebellion. It's why Jesus was killed by crucifixion, a Roman form of punishment. That when we care for the least of these, It is nothing short of a subversive act because it is a different way of counting. We were on a tour years ago at the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C., And we walked by this sign that said, Nicodemus, Kansas. That Nicodemus, Kansas is a town established in 1877 by formerly enslaved African Americans leaving Kentucky seeking freedom. It is the oldest and the only remaining black settlement west of the Mississippi, that it started with 350 black settlers and they established a newspaper, a bank, hotels, schools, churches, and other businesses. And the town grew rapidly until it was unable to secure the railroad through its city. But it remains as a national historic landmark. But it also stands out as a beacon of hope for a different way of counting. And the reason the sign caught my eye is because Nicodemus is that Pharisee who went to see Jesus in the pages of Scripture, and Nicodemus was invited to be born again, to see others and everything differently. But Nicodemus was confused. It didn't make sense. How can someone re-enter the womb and be born again to see everything differently? But a different way of counting does not always make sense. And Nicodemus was changed. And we're still talking about him today. That Nicodemus and Nicodemus, Kansas, reminds us that everybody counts. 
at Pentecost, the Spirit of God blew through the room gathering people together where the church was born from different nations and different languages, that it was and is a picture of God's hope for this world. And after Pentecost, we are still trying to live into this hope where there are so many divisions amongst us. And years ago, I remember a child of the church that after her baptism, she was telling her extended family all about it, what it was like to stand in the waters, to proclaim Jesus is Lord, what the minister said, what the robe looked like that she wear, what she felt like standing in front of all the congregation as they were looking at her. And she was so excited to tell all of her family. And when she told them, I joined the church, everybody was so excited. We're so proud of you. That's so wonderful. Until she was telling her younger cousin, who was in elementary school, and she went up to her younger cousin and said, I joined the church. And her cousin looked awfully confused and said, which church? And no one knew what to say. It wasn't the question you normally ask. Which church? There seems to be so many of them. But that simple question invites us into a deeper answer. That whenever we proclaim Jesus is Lord, we join the church. We join the church that cares for the least, the lost, and the left behind. That we are always learning a different way of counting. Because within the love of God, everybody counts. Amen.